Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So in today's episode of Fossil Friday, it's a very exciting one. So behind me, you may recognize it, you may not. It's a very interesting building that is actually home to one of the largest natural history collections in the world. So it's the one and only Smithsonian. So I'm here in Washington DC and we're going to go explore the museum together now. Now I wish I could break this into lots of mini videos and episodes but we don't have time for that. So we're just going to have a quick run around and check out some of the amazing exhibitions here because there's over 140 million specimens that is looked after by the Smithsonian. So let's go see a few of them. So the Smithsonian has a main entrance that actually brings you out onto the first floor of the museum where you go into the Great Hall with the giant African elephant or there's a side entrance which is the one I'm entering here which actually brings you out onto the ground floor and then you kind of stagger up through the museum. So the external building is quite spectacular to look at, not quite as beautiful as the London Natural History Museum. Um, I might be biased, but it's missing all those beautiful motifs um, all around the outside. But the inside of the Smithsonian and the exhibitions definitely give London a run for its money. I have never seen exhibitions so well done. So I really recommend going to the Smithsonian if you ever get the chance to, because they are just amazing. So I hope this video kind of gives you a bit of an insight as to what you can expect if you do go to visit. But as you enter, you see the wonderful Easter Island statue and then also this humongous quartz crystal. Now I cannot express to you how big these crystals are and I tried to reach in to do a size comparison with my hand, but there is a kind of a gate in front of it so I can't quite reach it, but you can see how big it is. It is amazing to see quartz crystals of that size. I've never actually seen them in person like that. And here you can see the Easter Island statue again, just sitting there proudly when you enter. There's something really magnificent about them when you see them up close. Now this is a mother of pearl book that I just thought was so beautiful, so I had to share. And before we go up to the main exhibitions, I did check out the stuffed birds, which are on the ground floor, just because I thought I have to go see a bald eagle, just because I'm in America, it's only fair. So I then made my way up the stairs, which is where I entered and I saw Henry, the giant African elephant, proudly in the Great Hall. And this is kind of the center of the museum. So you can see all the wonderful exhibitions dotted around it and the architecture of the inside is just incredible. It's like a big dome and it's just very grand. And there's these kind of exhibitions going all around and all up the other floors. So I didn't quite know where to start, but I did clock the ocean hall and I thought, well, we'll go there, especially because there was a ginormous jellyfish hanging from the ceiling and I just, I had to go check it out. So I walked in and there is so much to look at everywhere. So I didn't even know where to start. I was like a kid in a candy shop and um, there was fossils, there were shells, there were um, sea creatures. So you can see here some of the fossil stuff of the ammonites. There was a megalodon jaw with all the rows of teeth, which was a really fun photo opportunity to kind of stand in front of. And then they even have a life-size model of a megalodon just next to the cafe. So here you can see it. And I've never actually seen a model of a megalodon and it was quite magnificent to see it. It's a, a pretty scary looking model but in the best way. So you can see here, you can literally sit below it and you've got this humongous shark just hanging there chilling. And to be honest, I'm looking at those teeth and I don't even think that's life size. I think that's uh, definitely a younger Megalodon um, than they could have got. And then here's an ammonite that actually has bite marks on it. And you know, I like a bit an ammonite. And so you can see the rows of teeth there. And here's more rows of teeth, but these ones are from a Megalodon shark. So lots and lots of teeth. <laughs> And then as we head on through, we can see some lovely fossils, just all kind of on display very nicely of all different species in this one. And then there's lots of ammonites, there was lots of crinoids, and there was just so much to look at and so much to touch as well. There was a lot of interactive ex exhibits. So here you can see some ammonites, some shells, and you can actually touch them all and they encourage you to touch them, which I think is just awesome. And then above you is even more stuff. So you've got all these like skeletons and vertebrae and marine reptiles. You've got living creatures like whales. And then you've also got the fossilized ones as well, which I think is great for kind of children and for people to see the relation between evolution because you can see the bones side by side, which is just awesome. And then we get into these cabinets, which are full of shells and all the different patterns that the same species can have a giant crab, because why not? They are just crazy looking creatures. 
and then we can get up close with an, I think this is an isopod. I'm not very familiar with these creatures, but it was interesting to see it in a jar. Um, quite unusual looking things, a giant clam. Then what's next? Oh, we've got a horseshoe crab and lots of other beautiful shells. I can never get tired of just looking at shells. They're so different from one another and the colors and the shapes, they really are one of nature's just marvels. I, I find them so fascinating because they're just so vastly different from one another and they're so beautiful at the same time. And then we've got starfish. And here's up close with the jellyfish model, which I think is pretty cool. And I loved these girls' hats. So I thought those squid hats are just hilarious, so I had to grab those. <laughs> and then the models that hang above are beautiful. And so the whale model here is actually, I've never seen one quite like it. It's, it's very lifelike, it's, it's lovely. More shells. So you can see the, the cabinets are just full of all these curiosities and they all have really like interesting information about them. So it's very educational and I think it's suitable for all ages. And here, this was actually very interesting, we have another giant squid specimen. So if you guys didn't see my video a few weeks ago, I went to see Archie the Giant Squid at the Natural History Museum in London, so I'll link that down below. And I actually got to see another specimen at the Smithsonian. Now this giant squid definitely looks a lot less healthy than Archie, and Archie wasn't meant to be very healthy either because it was found quite shallow for giant squids. But if you look how skinny these tentacles are, I, I don't think that was a very healthy squid in my opinion. And then we get into the deep sea zone here. So this was very interesting because these are the creatures that live very, very deep in the ocean. So they are very peculiar looking things. And I'm just spinning around here so you can see the whale and the, the whale skull. And they also had another room that um, was playing very interesting movies as well. So I think I show you it here. Um, so actually you can dive down and like see kind of almost like a mini documentary, which was cool. A double tusk narwhal skull. Now you guys know I did a video of that in the London History Museum as well. Now this was a really interesting flounder. The, both its eyes are on one side of its head. So they did a special dye treatment to show it, which I thought was pretty cool. Now I just thought this interactive globe was incredible. Like how cool is this? So it was to show all about climate change, but it was just so visual and so beautiful. Like they really nailed their exhibitions. Like look at this sea hall. Like it's so beautiful. You don't even know where to look. There's just so many things. Um, so this was a really cool squid. Um, you guys might have remembered in my squid video, there was this really weird looking squid that these oil um, drillers saw and it was that species, which was quite cool. And so now I like how they did their exhibitions because they also have their fossil sea creatures next to their sea creatures of the modern world. So this is, um, you can see here, a mosasaur skeleton, but it's literally right next door to where they've got all their other sea creatures that are still alive today. So I think it's really visual for people to kind of flow through time and see how creatures related to one another. And they show you how the fossils are found. So obviously when you see dinosaurs or marine reptiles all beautifully kind of mounted, you, you don't really think about how you find them in the rock but they're, you know, crushed or they're all sprawled out everywhere. And that's what I love about the Smithsonian is they actually show you how you find it. And we're coming up here to one of my favorite uh, specimens, which is the Stegosaurus. Now this was one of the pieces I was most excited to come and see at the Smithsonian. You can actually see the Stegosaurus skeleton, how they found it. So this is how they pieced together all the other Stegosaurus skeletons, because they could actually see how the plates were arranged how all the bones went together. And so you can see the little head down here on the right, but it, it's just really cool to see it in its natural form. And this is how the paleontologist found it. And I think that was really visual to see. And then on the other side of the Stegosaurus skeleton, we have the fossil lab. So apologies, the glass is a little bit reflective, but I love the fossil lab because you can actually see the scientists working and they had so many educational things just like laid out for people to look at and so you had people doing kind of micro fossil analysis prepping actual dinosaur bones that were in their plaster cast still and i just thought how awesome is that and so that was um quite fun to watch and then we get into some of the early fossil exhibitions um so this is showing us the fish out of water 
So you can see in there, some of the glass makes it very difficult to um, film, so I apologise if some of the footage is a bit poor. But the museum is full of these gorgeous metal sculptures. Um, so I don't know who designed them all, but they are really lovely and they're throughout all the exhibitions. So you'll see another one here to do with the coal in a minute. Um, but they're just, they're kind of dotted around and they're just beautiful because you can touch them. They're made out of metal and they're so nicely done. So I'm now getting into the fossilised plant area. Now this was very interesting because it wasn't just fossilised plants, it was talking all about coal and how coal forms and obviously the fossilised plants are a byproduct of that. Um, and it was so interestingly done and so beautiful the exhibition, like above you were fossils, around you were fossils and they even had like an educational video which I'll show you in a minute where you can actually see the formation of coal and I think for a lot of people that's a a very interesting kind of process that they, they didn't know about prior to it. So here you can see another one of those metal sculptures I was telling you about. Um, so here is the video, so you can see here that they're showing a fossilised tree in the rock and it's asking the question how did this become a fossil? So it goes back in time, 300 million years, to a swampy environment where a tree has fallen and you can see, I, I think this animation was so well done, so it's, it shows you how that kind of tree trunk then sinks into the swamp eventually, turning into peat as it decays and kind of squishes down. Over time more and more layers form, more peat kind of goes on top of the old peat and eventually that like deeper burial, buried site turns into coal after thousands and thousands of years. Just like that. <laughs> so I just thought this was a really fun um, visual and they had the phrase biology turns into geology and I thought how brilliant is that? And so they also had some amazing tree trunk fossils as well and th these are from the Triassic and the colours in these trunks, they have been polished but oh my they are just so vibrant. I don't even think you're like on the camera it doesn't do them justice, they were so bright, it was like orange and red. They were really, really beautiful. So you can see them a bit closer there. It was just like a rainbow of colour, it was amazing. So you can see here that these were conifers and they were the most abundant trees of their time. So then we head further into the kind of fossily area and you can see there's lots of marine reptiles on the wall, which is, which is actually very, very good timing because in Dorset at the moment so many amazing and huge bones are being found. So I don't know if you guys saw the recent news that that young girl had found that humongous ichthyosaur bone. Um, it's just crazy what's coming out of Dorset at the moment. So it's quite nice to see all the marine reptiles on the walls here. Um, obviously this large one here isn't an ichthyosaur, but just below it, the little one is an ichthyosaur. You can see some of them here and they are really spectacular. There's just, they're, they're everywhere and they're humongous, um, which is so lovely as well. And they also had a nice section on insects about how they camouflage. <laughs> I thought that was really interesting. Because it's very true, it's amazing how some insects look literally like a leaf, literally like a twig. I find it amazing how they camouflage themselves. And you can see another amazing dinosaur skeleton there, just towering above. And then they put some of the dinosaurs fighting each other, which I thought was really fun. Um, so you can see here a scene with a triceratops and a T-Rex having a good old fight. And just look at those. I love how their necks kind of just tower over the galleries. And you can see the poor Triceratops lost a bit of his horn. It's almost like um, Hotel Transylvania meets a museum because it's like the skeletons have come alive and they're fighting one another because obviously they have no flesh on them. So I find it quite amusing. And there's amazing Mastodon as well. Beautiful to see. There's a giant sloth in the background there as well, which there's quite a lot of overlaps between the London Natural History Museum and the Smithsonian. And it's very interesting to see how each museum kind of educates people on the different um, pieces and specimens. I quite like to compare between the two. And the one thing I love about the Smithsonian is they have lots of videos you can just sit down and watch. So if you need a break, because it is a humongous museum, you can just sit down, and watch an educational video about all these different topics, which I think is great. 
and here is a humongous fish fossil with another humongous fish inside its belly which was great a nice little ammonite being chased by a marine reptile probably a mosasaur just look at that like they're really nicely designed galleries and I loved the palm leaf in the background there I thought it was beautiful I know the focus is on the uh, other creatures but there's something about that leaf and here's Henry again he really is a magnificent elephant like I didn't quite the size of him I wasn't expecting it is humongous so now I'm trying to work out where to go next so I'm just spinning around the great hall being like ah oh, look at all these exhibitions because they have so many and you could literally spend a day in each of them if you wanted to so it's really hard to kind of know where to go next and you do end up walking miles and miles so it's great exercise so up next is the mammals exhibit and wow this one blew me away I, I don't know what I was expecting from the mammals but it was 10 times better than what I was actually expecting so you can see some of the creatures here and I loved this walrus but the otter stole the show for me just look at that pose he's definitely wanting to be painted like a french girl and then you can just see everywhere you look there's just really amazing pieces and i really love the positions they've been put in like it's really interesting to see and one of my favorite ones is actually this giraffe i mean the taxidermist definitely had a lot of fun with that tongue just look at it just reaching up just catching some food and I thought such a cute little pangolin as well honestly I had the best time going around this museum I, I wish I had longer just for the history museum it's really amazing and I love how they put the animals they put them in like real life scenarios so they're literally in like a hunting scene and there's lots of interactive kind of parts to the exhibits it's a really fun place so you can see here they, they put them as like prey and predator which I think is great and they've tried to build some of their more natural habitats as well and here's a giraffe drinking because why not I've never seen a giraffe drink and so it's quite nice that they've decided to put it in a different position to the usual but you can see here it's it's got a lovely space to the galleries nothing is too kind of tight or squidged like even on a weekend there's a nice amount of space to kind of walk around you don't feel like you're rammed in with six million tourists it, it was just very comfortable so they're they're really nice museums in that respect because you can actually move around them like you don't feel like you're in a a stampede of people at all times which is how i feel like london can feel sometimes so here we are now heading to the human origins exhibit so this one blew me away this was so this was the biggest kind of human evolution exhibition i've ever seen and they've really put a lot of thought into how they do it and it was just beautiful like there's so many kind of almost like artistic parts to it so there's these sculptures above each of the galleries that look like they're made out of stone and it's just so visual and it's so just aesthetic and I wasn't expecting that and it was very interesting to see how kind of the human evolution can be done because I think people are very interested in human evolution so um, it was a very popular gallery and one part of the gallery that I thought was very cool they had like diseases but they had them beautifully molded out of glass so I never thought I would say that you know smallpox and the plague and you know hiv could look so beautiful but look at them <laughs> they're, they're almost like uh, ornaments you could put in your house so they had like these really like visual things regarding population and disease and food and agriculture it was so interesting and here's the above view of henry just in case you wanted to see it from a different angle so i'm now one floor up so the top floor isn't open to the public so that is where the scientists are working so this is the final floor but there are still so many exhibits on this floor so we've got 
uh, all the kind of gems and minerals, we've got the solar system, we've got volcanoes, but you can also kind of see the above views of all the other galleries. So here's the nice overview of the sea, sea gallery, um, so you can just see it from above, but you can also see how it's laid out, like nothing is squidged together, which is really nice. Um, so here is a little bit more of Henry, because I just want to make sure he gets gets his limelight in this video, apparently. <laughs> so we're now heading into the gem department. So you can see here a rough diamond and a cut diamond. And it always amazes me how unappealing a rough diamond looks. And then they cut it and it's just like, wow, where did that sparkle come from? It definitely shows that, you know, a lot of this, the beauty of a diamond is in the skill of the how it's like cut and shaped. But... Oh my, this gallery of minerals, I have never seen anything like it. Some of these specimens are just out of this world. Like, I know they're from this world, but I have never seen crystals like this. Like, they had everything you could think of, and some of the most beautiful pieces. And they were such big specimens as well. It was really spectacular. So I'm not going to, like narrate this entire gallery because um, I feel like I'll just be rambling for ages and I'm just going to let you sit here and just see the beauty of these minerals because the colours, the structures, I was in awe walking around this um, gallery and so I think you guys will be as well so I'm just going to let you enjoy.
So your peace and quiet is coming to an end now as we are about to head into the mine gallery. Now this was such a cool aspect of this exhibition and so interesting as well. So it actually showed people kind of how mining works and why it's so important to our day-to-day -day life. So they showed some amazing samples and specimens of gold and silver and copper um, and they were like in their natural form as well, which was very interesting and just beautiful to see. Like I haven't seen, like some of the size of the nuggets in this ex exhibition were incredible. Um, so you can see here some amazing copper pieces, just looking very pretty. And then if we actually head in, they had a lot of educational things about kind of minerals, metals, ores, how the whole process of mining works. Um, and there was a, there was a few really um, good interactive displays, which I'll show you in a minute, where they, they teach you how kind of, for example, a car, how it's made up of all these different commodities and why you need you know, iron, why you need manganese, why you need all these other like metals and minerals and how much of each one goes into the different aspects of the car, which I thought was an amazing touch because I don't think many people realize how much of their day-to-day -day life is made possible because of mining. And so this was a really positive part of the exhibition because you can see it, it was super popular with people. And I think it's a really necessary subject because I think a lot of people don't understand it and they have a negative connotation towards it, even though they use it every day or every hour of the day, you know, because they're using things that were only made possible because of the mining. So I think this was a really important part of the exhibition and it was very well done. So I do recommend checking this part out. And they did have these amazing glow in the dark minerals. Like, how cool is that? They are literally glowing red and green, and then in normal light, you would never know. They look so normal. It's very, very cool. Ta-da! <laughs> so here is one of the interactive displays I was telling you about. So you can see here, you've got all the different kind of minerals and metals that go into a car, and when you click them, they tell you the rough amount that's needed for one vehicle and also where it goes into the vehicle and also where they're mined. I thought this was such a fun, um, almost like game where you can, you know, try and guess where the different um, metals would be used. And there's always going to be more pieces that use them than you think. So you can just see it there. I just thought, how cool is that? And then it has in the corner a like, thirsty touch me button and it then tells you how you know the average kind of coke can how that is only made possible because of mining as well so it was a very interesting exhibit so then we head into the more general rock gallery so this has a little bit of everything from construction to fossils to volcanic stuff so you can just see some more beautiful specimens here and there was also a lovely viewing platform that actually looked over the fossil gallery here. So you can see some of the skeletons a bit more in all their glory, but they were still too humongous to get into one shot anyway, especially the sauropods um, just chilling there. But you can see in the middle here an amazing columnar jointing replica. So that was really fun and it was very hands on. So you could touch the joints and you know see all the different columns which and they actually encourage it they they want you to touch it which i think is quite nice and then if i head over here let's see what i'm going to see aha here we can actually see the washington capitol building which i thought would be nice to show you guys <laughs> but you can see they've got lots about construction and architecture and then here we get onto some of the more volcanic pieces. So this is talking a little bit about eruptions and what it can do to trees and the deposits it can leave behind, which was very interesting and very well done. Um, I wish I had more time to kind of properly check out this um, section of the exhibition. I kind of had to run around this one a little bit, but it was really beautiful to see. And they had some amazing pieces. And so here you can see some more of the lavas. They had some pohoi hoi lavas or pohoi hoi, depends which way you pronounce it. And also some amazing, um, I, I don't know what the red clusters were, um, but you'll see it in a second. 
of this specimen like the, look at those I think it's garnet that those red clusters and then it's more garnets in the corner down there as well some beautiful pieces and you can see those um, red garnets there as well on that big one So I then did run over to the Air and Space Museum as well, but unfortunately half the galleries of this one were closed. But I did get to look at some of the early flight stuff with the Wright brothers, which was very interesting. Um, and it's also just a spectacular museum as well. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I know it was a bit of a long one, but there was just so much to see. And I, I've only shown you a fraction of what they have on display. And what they have on display is only a fraction of their collection. So, it's really a spectacular place, the Smithsonian Museum. So if you ever get the chance, do go check them out. And I'm hoping in the future, I'll get the chance to go back to them and hopefully make some more detailed videos for you guys, especially now that I can see how the museums are, what exhibitions they have. And you know, if I get the chance to spend a few weeks there, oh, I could make some amazing content for those of you who aren't able to visit the museums um, because then it can be online for you all to enjoy. But I really hope you did enjoy today's video. Please like and subscribe if you did and hopefully I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.